Hi, my name is Alexander Yu, and I will be presenting my work dissecting performance of production quick that I did with my advisor, Theopolis Benson, while I was at Brown University. So why should you care about quick? In recent years, our lives are increasingly reliant on online services, brought on by the recent shift of working from home and mobile phone-based entertainment. As users, we expect these services to always provide a smooth and responsive experience. Content providers recognize that and have spent countless engineering hours trying to trim seconds to milliseconds off loading times. Thus, any advancement to cut down on loading times is invaluable for improving the quality of experience of our online services that billions use each day. Quick is a new transfer protocol designed to replace TCP for primarily secure internet traffic. And secure here means HTTPS traffic. So why do we need to replace TCP for secure internet traffic? I mean, TCP has been working well for decades at this point. Well, in 2013, Google said that TCP was simply too slow for them. In particular, they, said that they stated that they wanted to decrease the number of round trips necessary in a web request, something that is difficult with TCP because TCP is implemented in the kernel. Therefore, Quick's primary objective is improve latency over TCP. It does this through four ways. First, Quick is implemented in user space on top of UDP. This enables implementers to build a TCP-like protocol with all new features necessary for better network performance. Second, Quick has a faster connection establishment time that takes one less round trip to complete compared to TCP. Third, Quick removes TCP's head of line blocking problem. And fourth, Quick has simplified has improved and simplified recovery mechanisms for handling packet loss. History tells us that Quick worked well for Google. In 2017, Google published the results after deploying Quick for a number of years and say that Quick led to significant improvements in end user latency for their search platform. Was this end of the story for Quick? No, not even close. You see, Google's Quick was their own protocol. It wasn't standardized and a very broad specification that few other organizations tried to replicate. So in 2016, Google introduced Quick to the IETF in order to standardize the protocol. The thing is, Quick standardization does not necessarily equate to a standardization in performance. This is because Quick is implemented in user space, and most content providers choose to use their own Quick implementation. Thus, it is not a given that content providers who adopt Quick Will achieve the same performance improvements that Google did. Since quick standardization began, there have been numerous performance studies published by large content providers and independent researchers. These content providers include Facebook, Google, and Cloudflare, among others. Facebook and Google were able to significantly reduce overall latency and tail latency by using quick. On the other hand, Cloudflare, from their production experiments, measured that quick performance was 1-4% to worse compared to that of TCP. So here we see mixed results among content providers. Since these content providers did not provide much detailed root cause analysis in their studies, it is unclear why Cloudflare's results did not match that of Facebook or Google. On the flip side, the few performance studies done by independent researchers on open source IETF Quick implementations have mainly described negative results for Quick. They cite unoptimized code and different congestion control algorithms as the main reasons behind Quick's poor performance. So, <clears throat> we can see from existing research that local experimentation often does not align with content providers' experiments, experiences with Quick. There are a great deal of challenges involved in replicating production-like Quick performance in a local environment. First, Experimenters should perform kernel tuning in order to optimize UDP packet transmission. These sorts of optimizations are deployed at most, if not all, large content providers. Second, experimenters must optimally tune their quick server settings. While Google, Facebook, and Cloudflare have all open sourced their quick implementations, they do not necessarily use the provided default settings in their production deployments. Lastly, there is the issue of code optimization. I just showed an example in the previous slide where another independent researcher measured poor performance from Cloudflare's open source Quick library and cited code churn as the main reason. Even Google provides a bolded message on their website saying that their open source version is not performant at scale. 
Thus, these challenges require a significant amount of engineering effort to resolve, which is neither straightforward nor scalable. Given the issues with existing, re with existing research, how does one actually go about accurately comparing QUIC and TCP performance? While local experimentation offers greater control and root cause analysis, it's tough to tune a local QUIC server to be as performant as those hosted by large content providers. On the other hand, production experimentation offers optimal server performance, but practically zero opportunities for analysis for those who work outside these companies. As such, we address the problem of accurately comparing QUIC and TCP performance by combining these two approaches where we use local clients and production servers. This allows us to take advantage of the various optimizations made by content providers while also having access to client logs for root cause analysis. I'll describe this further in the next slide. Our approach focuses on benchmarking and analyzing production endpoints. This entails first using publicly available production endpoints from Google, Facebook, and Cloudflare. These endpoints support both HTTP2, which runs on top of TCP, and HTTP3, which runs on top of Quick. Second, we use multiple Quick clients, such as Google Chrome, Proxygen, which is Facebook's Quick client, and NGTCP2, an open source Quick library. Using multiple Quick clients allows us to gauge the impact of the client on Quick performance. Third, we employ different network conditions from the client. And lastly, we experiment with both single object and multi-object endpoints. We benchmark both these types of endpoints to analyze different aspects of the QUIC protocol. In this presentation, I will present four insights from our study. For the first, for the first insight, I will focus on how QUIC's faster connection establishment time has a noticeable but limited impact on performance. The figure shown here compares HTTP2 to HTTP3 performance for numerous production endpoints. If a cell in the figure has a blue color and a 20% label, that means HTTP3 was 20% faster than HTTP2 for that endpoint. These graphs are also divided by extra loss and extra delay, which represent the network conditions we benchmark with. First, you can see how HTTP3 was faster for 100 kilobyte endpoints in most cases. Because this behavior was consistent across content providers, this shows how Quick's proto protocol design improves total latency for small size requests. However, this benefit was insignificant for 1 megabyte and 5 megabyte endpoints, as the differences between H2 and H3 were negligible in these cases. This demonstrates the, this, this demonstrates the limited scope of Quick's faster connection establishment. In some cases, Quick performed much worse than TCP. But this behavior was inconsistent across content providers, pointing to implementation-specific issues. From the results you just saw, QUIC has some inherent advantages over TCP. However, there are multiple cases where TCP performed much better than QUIC, which was unexpected. So in the following slides, I will examine how this unexpected behavior was mainly born out of differences in client configuration and bugs in congestion control logic. These figures show the differences in latency between each quick client for each production endpoint. Regarding the percentage labels, a label of 10% would mean that the client performed 10% worse than the best quick client for that endpoint. Thus, 0% is the best value a client can score. Our results show that Chrome consistently performed around 10% worse than the other clients for 100 kilobyte endpoints. However, this behavior, this behavior was not actually not that interesting since it was caused by Chrome actually validating certificates, whereas the other clients did not. The more interesting observation here is Facebook during 100 milliseconds added delay. It is clear here that our NGTCB2 client was configured in some way that made it perform much better than its counterparts. You can read more about this in our paper, but the gist of it was that NGTCB2 had a different default TLS configuration compared to the other clients. Congestion control quality matters a lot for quick performance. In our study, we identified a bug in Facebook's congestion control logic, which was the root cause for Facebook's poor quick performance during a 100 milliseconds added delay. As you can see, before we identified this bug, quick was 33% slower than TCP for Facebook's 100 kilobyte endpoint during a 100 milliseconds added delay. After a patch was deployed to fix this bug, 
We again benchmarked Facebook's single object endpoints during 100 milliseconds added delay and measured a significant improvement in quick performance. Thus, through our study, we show that even for large content providers like Facebook, congestion control quality plays a large role in determining Quick's relative performance compared to TCP. Now that I've covered our single object results from our study, I'll discuss our multi-object results. The primary insight we gained from our multi-object analysis was that Quick's removal of TCP's headline blocking problem has unclear advantages in practice. Here, we provide a, vi a visualization on how Quick's removal of head of line blocking would help with web page performance. In this visualization, both Quick and TCP are receiving packets from three streams, streams A, B, and C. In the first flight of packets, data is received for all three streams, but the first packet is lost. Quick's removal of head of line blocking allows Quick to process data from streams B and C, whereas TCP cannot do that. This is because Quick is implemented in user space, so it can differentiate between HTTP streams. TCP has no knowledge of HTTP streams, and essentially thinks all packets belong to the same stream. On the second flight of packets, the lost packet is retransmitted, and now both TCP and Quick can process all the remaining packets. So here, while Quick's removal of head of line blocking allows it to process some data earlier, it does not necessarily impact the total processing time. This tidbit is pertinent in the next slide. Our multi-object results were simply not that different from our single object results apart from Cloudflare. The, single ob the, uh, the speed index label in our multi-object results figure is important here because speed index measures the change in rigid visual content over time. Thus, speed index is related to the example I just showed as it reward, rewards early rendering of visual content from the browser. You can see that Quick did not outperform TCP during 1% loss for Google and Facebook. This shows how Quick's removal of head of line blocking does not always lead to clear advantages for Quick. Cloudflare is an exception, but the patterns of its results imply that the Quick protocol was not necessarily the root cause. You can read more about this in our paper, but the gist of it was that Cloudflare sent resources in a different order with HTTP2 than with HTTP3. So, Cloudflare's results were mainly caused by differences in application configuration, rather than differences between Quick and TCP. To wrap up, we performed our study due to a lack of relevant and detailed analysis on Quick performance. While existing production studies suffer from a lack of detailed root cause analysis, Independent studies do not accurately portray Quick as they experiment with non-optimized code and non-optimized configurations that differ substantially from production deployments. Our approach combines the best of both worlds by using local Quick clients to query production Quick servers. This allows us to take advantage of content providers' various Quick optimizations while also having access to client logs for root cause analysis. The results we found showed that the implementation quality often plays a larger role in performance rather than the protocol design itself. In particular, congestion control and client configuration greatly impacted quick performance in our study. Consequently, we show that a significant amount of implementation effort and tuning is required to drive consistent, noticeable improvements over TCP in practice. Lastly, the largest gaps in our study include the lack of video streaming analysis and the lack of coverage for other content providers serving Quick in production. For example, we did not include Facebook, uh, we did not include Microsoft, Lightspeed, and Fastly endpoints in our study. We plan to address these points in the future. And that is it for this presentation. Thank you for listening.